Hey y'all, welcome to Susan's Country Living. I'm Susan, welcome to my kitchen this morning. I have the day off from teaching today. It's President's Day, so I decided to go ahead and get my dinner going um, in my um, Instant Pot on the slow cooker function because I'm gonna be out running some errands today. So what I'm cooking today is braised short ribs. I've gotten some short ribs or purchased some from the grocery store. They were on a really good price. This was several months ago. And I brought them home, I shrink wrap them, I freeze them, and today I'm going to cook them. There are six of them here, and what I'm doing is um, salt and peppering them. I have my iron skillet back here. There was some bacon grease in it. Um, I drained most of it off, but left some. I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil in the pan, and my um, bacon bits are starting to smoke, but they're going to give some flavor. Um, to this dish. Um, so I'm going to finish up um, salting and peppering my short ribs here and talk to you about the ingredients that you will need for this dish. Um, of course you'll need you know your salt and your pepper. You can use uh, kosher salt. I'm using Redmond real salt. You're also going to need thyme, rosemary leaves, oregano, and marjoram if you have it. If you don't, that's okay. And one half teaspoon of each. You'll need four cloves of garlic, chopped up fine, or coarse, however you like. You know, some people like to bite into that chunk of garlic. A couple of bay leaves. Um, you can use fresh mushrooms is what it called for, like a box of fresh mushrooms sliced up. I have these dehydrated mushrooms I did. I'm just going to throw them in the bottom um, of the pot and see how they do. I'm going to try that out. Also, you'll need an onion. I just have, I had just taken a quarter out of that onion. I'm going to slice it up here in just a minute um, to put in our dish. So let me finish salting and peppering these. So you're going to brown these first. I'm going to go ahead and get those started. You could brown them in your Instant Pot because it does have a saute feature. But I'm just going, I had this already, so that's what I'm going to use. And that's what you want to hear. You want to hear that sizzle. You can do these in smaller batches if you, I'm going to have to turn this on. And you want to get those nice and brown on all sides. Also have some red cooking wine. I just have had a fourth of a cup left in my in my bottle, so that's I'm going to use that. Um, it called for a Cabernet Sauvignon or some sort of red wine. And um, remember how much two cups is what it called for. Uh, there's no way I would add that much. Um, I just want just a little bit of the flavor. I've had experiences with adding too much and it doesn't come out well. So we're just going to let these brown on all sides so they're already nice and getting nice and brown here. You see that like that is what you want. Let's turn this up just a little bit. These short ribs are very savory. They have a lot of fat in them. And while that's browning, I'm going to get my onion chopped up. I've also sprayed my Instant Pot with some, I just have some uh, ghee. You can just, you could oil it, you know, whatever you want it to put in there. It's just going to help with the, the sticking because I'm not using a liner. If I was using my regular slow cooker, I would use a liner. Ribs are brown. They're going to go into the liner of the Instant Pot. Oh, also, you're going to need some uh, beef broth. I have my bone broth that I've canned. Let's see what it called for here. Um, it doesn't really give a amount, so I'm just going to use a pint. 
uh, you could use water or put some bouillon in some water, beef bouillon. But I have this wonderful canned beef bone broth. And it's delicious just to heat it and drink it out of a cup, especially when you're sick or have a sore throat. Also do the chicken broth the same way. And it's just really nice to have that. I say, you know, you can save your bones up, freeze them, and then when you're ready, put that on one morning and just let it go. Okay. Some of these I can stand on their end to get those ends or sides ground. Get this onion sliced up. So, thyme, rosemary, oregano, marjoram, bay leaves, garlic, uh, red wine, uh, mushrooms, and your uh, beef broth if you have it. This onion's kind of starting to sprout a little bit, but that's okay. We'll use it for the flavor. You know, if, if I didn't have this onion, I could go out to the garden and pull some of my green onions and use that. If you had shallots, you could even do dried onions. If you had the, um, the little chopped up dried onions, just kind of whatever you have in your pantry. Don't be afraid to experiment with different ingredients. If you don't have one, you know, try to substitute. These are good served, these um, ribs are good served over, of course, mashed potatoes. Um, probably going to do brown rice. You could do mashed cauliflower. There's a restaurant I go to that they call, they're called Drunken Short Ribs, and they put mashed potatoes. They put the rib on top of the mashed potatoes and then drown it in gravy. So I'll be making gravy from... Um, the juice that's in the pan. So these are starting to be ready to put down in our Instant Pot. These, I can tell, they're so tender, just the way they feel. Okay, so I want to keep my pan hot. And you can see how they did there. I'm going to go ahead and, and sprinkle some of my dried mushrooms in on top and kind of down around the sides so that they will get in the liquid that that's, we're going to pour in here. Yeah, put a couple of handfuls in there. This was, um, I think it was two boxes of mushrooms, just your regular mushroom boxes. Um, sliced them up, dehydrated them. And they've been wonderful to add to soups or, you know, any dish that you need mushrooms. Okay, so I'm going to add my onions and get them sautéed. And my garlic. Get these coated. Normally, if you were um, using fresh mushrooms, you would add them with your onions to saute. This is going to cook for just a couple of minutes. Then we'll be adding our herbs. I just kind of mixed them all together. We'll be adding the cooking wine. We'll be adding the beef broth. You don't do the bay, the bay leaves. I'm just putting them in the pot. So this was a this is a huge one. I'm just going to break it in half and spread them around the pot there. So caramelizing these onions a little bit brings out some more of the sweetness to counterbalance the acidity of the wine. So I know a lot of people don't use cooking wine. I do. Um, I don't, we don't, I don't have wine on hand normally. 
not something I use. And uh, so I use less because it does have salt in it. I can tell that these are starting to caramelize, get that brown, a little bit of brownness on them. So I'm going to kind of pull them to the side and deglaze the pan with this cooking wine. Just kind of scrape up all the browned bits. Oh, that smells good. Normally I wouldn't put acid in an iron skillet, but I'm not going to be cooking these in here very long. Okay, so I've deglazed the pan. I'm going to sprinkle in all of my herbs. Here. Oh, that smells good. Rosemary and thyme and oregano, marjoram. If there's something you don't like or something you're allergic to as far as an herb, leave it out. See if there's something you can substitute. And then I'm going to pour in my home canned beef bone broth from my bones that I get from Watermelon Hill Farm in Cat Springs. You can find them at the Belleville Farmers Market in Belleville, Texas on the first Saturday of each month except January. You can also find them on uh, in Katy on the Grand Parkway uh, south of Interstate 10. There's a farmer's market at a in a church parking lot and he's normally there also. Great 100% grass-fed beef. All right. I always like to put a plug for him and their family. I'm going to support, we support our local farmers. Um, Friedrich Heritage Farms is locally. They have um, pigs, pastured pigs, pastured sheep, pastured chickens. Um, we buy pork from them. We support our local students in FFA buying chickens from them. Even though they're not pastured, they're, you know, they're out, they're running around, um, even though they are feeding them grain. So, um, but we do like to support them. So I'm going to let this cook um, for about three minutes, bring it to a boil, and then we're going to put it over our ribs and get them in the uh, Instant Pot. Okay, so my uh, liquid ingredients are ready to go into the pot over the meat. So first, I'm just going to, just for splashing purposes, I'm just going to take some of these onions out. We don't get a lot of splashing. And put the, just kind of spread the onions over the meat. Hot pads, the heat's off. And we're just going to pour this. into the pot and that's and we're going to kind of poke these mushrooms down into the liquid so that as this cooks they will rehydrate they're going to add a really deep umami flavor if you've ever used dried shiitake mushrooms you know what i'm talking about these were just um portobello mushrooms that I had dehydrated. All right, so let's take a let's clean that up in a little bit. So here we have our pot and the liquid is coming like almost to the top of the ribs. So let's go ahead and get them in the instant pot. So I've got my, my main uh, entree for my dinner ready cooking in the instant pot. I hope you try some short ribs. If you find some at the store at a decent price, grab them, um, braise them, follow this recipe if you like, change what you need to change, and they're going to be yummy. We'll take a look at them when they are done later today. Okay, so this has been cooking for about eight hours. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it here. Smells delicious. Kind of hard to see down in there. I'm going to lift one up and give it a oh, 
Oh yeah, it's just falling apart. So, um, yes, so you can see how it just comes apart just like that. So we're just gonna we'll put that on keep warm. I'm gonna cancel and then just keep warm. There we go. Still um, have it vented. So instead of mashed potatoes, I thought that I would do a uh, garlic couscous with that. And can uh, instead of you know having mashed potatoes, you could do mashed cauliflower. And I have some collard greens that were cooked and frozen, and we're going to have that. And we'll see what it looks like when we plate it up. Okay, so here we have our short ribs here on the plate. I've just taken them out of the slow cooker and tinted them there, and I took the all of the liquids that were in the bottom of the pan, the drippings, I skimmed the fat off. And some of those onions are in here, and some of those mushrooms. And I put a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch and some cold water. Some cornstarch and some cold water, and made a, a slurry, mixed it up, and added some to this. So I'm going to bring it to a boil and thicken this just a little bit. I'm not going to thicken it up as much as pan gravy would be thick. And I've got my couscous going and my collard greens back here. They have some sausage in them. We're going to have some good food. Good food tonight. So thanks for joining me today and cooking this meal that you can prepare in the morning. You can even do it the night before. Stick it in the crock pot and come home after a long day of work or, you know, working outside, wherever, whatever you do. And have a nice meal and have some leftovers. Um, and, you know, just good home cooking is what we have here on Susan's Country Living. So glad you joined me today. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button for, um, you know, more recipes and canning and gardening and chickens and sewing and crocheting and... Just lots of things that are going on here in the country. Hope y'all have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you later on the next video. Bye, y'all.